From the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians, down beginning at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. The play on the word from the old commercial, it was very popular when it came out, where the little old lady would drive up to the fast food window and ask, Where's the beef? Today we're asking, Where's the peace? Where's the peace? Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to us and through us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 The question was once asked, if, if you could choose what you want most in life, what would you ask for? The most common answer was peace. People want peace. Peace in their homes. Peace in their families. Peace in their workplaces, peace in our country, and peace in our world. Yeah. Our country has some of the best medical and psychological treatment centers, highest educational institutions, and worldwide communication abilities. Yes, ma'am. Yet in all of these things, most people are without true inner peace. The results are devastating. There are broken marriages, split families, hatred, rebellion, financial anxiety, and a country unsettled. The world will offer you peace through many forms of escapism. Drugs, alcohol, immoral relationships, constant entertainment. It is sought in all forms of pleasure, self-satisfaction, and positive thinking. Many believe that peace is defined as the absence of trouble. They refuse to face the problems in their lives, believing that this is finding peace. The world, however, has never had an answer to true peace. Years ago, a man found himself on a train sitting between two ladies. Unfortunately for him, the two ladies were arguing constantly about whether the window should be open or shut. The first lady, furthest from the window, argued that she would die of heat stroke if it wasn't open. The other said she would certainly catch pneumonia if it didn't stay closed. And when the ticket taker, ticket taker came, the ladies began to beg him to come up with a solution. But unfortunately, he didn't have a solution. And finally, the man sitting in the middle spoke up. He said, first open the window. That'll kill one. Then close it. That'll kill the other. And then we'll have some peace. <laughs> today is the fourth week of Advent. And the subject for today is peace. Peace in the home, peace in our lives. Yeah. If someone were to come up and ask you what is peace, how would you answer that? Is, one of the, is it one of the spiritual gifts? Peace, brothers and sisters, is one of those things that everyone wants, but no one really knows how to get it. <coughs> and if they do manage to get it, they don't know how to get it. Amen. Peace is not merely the absence of activity, 
Many people have a concept of peace similar to the man in the story. For them, peace is the absence of conflict. However, this falls short of the biblical vision. We often use the phrase peace and quiet as our need to slow down. But peace is more than living without anger. In scripture, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of love, generosity, justice, and grace as a transforming principle in our relationship. Peace is the frame of mind that we have when, when we are right with God. Peace is regarded as one of the supreme virtues and yet I often think it's missing in our lives. We think we have to get rid of all our problems in our lives. And if we do so, then and only then can we find peace. If we can get rid of the stress. If we can just get a new job. If we can just pay off our credit cards. Get on top of things. We have what we needed to achieve to in order to achieve peace, then we're never going to get it. Amen. The few things I've learned over the years, life is not about how fast you run, or how high you climb, or how well you bounce. In life, you need to forgive your enemies because it messes with their heads. <laughs> in life, every past has some problems. In life, don't call us something meaner than you. And in life, words that sink into your soul are whispered and not yelled. I want us to see today that peace comes not by getting rid of our problems, but by focusing on what God wants us to think about. If we have a personal relationship with God, then we have access to all of his power and all of his peace. The question becomes, how do we tap into that power so that we can experience that peace? Well, we tap into the power of God through his word. Hebrews tells us, for the word of God is alive and active. The word of God is the greatest source of power and our of help and strength. Mm -hmm. If we want to experience God's power, we must live in and saturate our lives with the Word of God. Amen. We become so wrapped up in life that we fail to be wrapped up in Jesus. Yeah. God's power flows from a life that is saturated with His Word, filled with His presence and consumed by His power. If you want peace, you got to start with the Word. We, we tap into the power of God through prayer. James admonishes us, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Prayer, brothers and sisters, is the combination that unlocks the door to the riches of the kingdom of God. Our lack of knowledge about prayer and our failure to pray are the things that block us from having a full and fruitful relationship with God. We tap, brothers and sisters, into the power of God also through other believers. The writer of Ecclesiastes says, though one may be overpowered, Two can defend themselves, yeah. and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You see, it's through unity with one another that we find peace. Amen. When we bind together with our fellow Christians, it makes us stronger. And when we're stronger, we can stand up to the world and all of its problems. When it hits us in the face, we can depend on others to get us through hard times. Amen. All of the explanations of peace that I have mentioned so far may be the same definition that you would use if someone asked you. We talk about peace as if it's something that happens when
when conflict and problems are not present. But that's not what real peace is about. It, it brings me to the text we read today. Uh, always be full of joy in the Lord. Yes. I say again, rejoice. Yes. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming. Yes. Don't worry about anything instead of praying about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He's done. Yes. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Yes. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone here that we live in a world that is plagued with violence and hatred. Wars are being fought all over the world. I recently read these startling statistics. Only 8% of the time since the beginning of recorded history has the world been entirely at peace. In over 31,000 years of recorded, I'm sorry, 3,000, 3,100 years of recorded history, only 286 days have been warless. About 8,000 treaties have been broken in the same time. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but do not panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nations will go to war against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. That being said, Jesus then comforts us in the Gospel of John, saying, I have told you all of this so that you might have peace in me. Here on earth, you'll have been trials and troubles. But I have overcome the world. Be a good cheer. The word of brothers and sisters is at odds with the purposes of God. You see, this is the devil's one shot to try to win. This is the final seconds of the fourth quarter. And he's behind. But the good news here is that though Satan does all he can, well, Jesus offers peace. Well, Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift, yeah. peace of mind and heart. The peace I give you is a gift that the world cannot give, yeah. so don't be troubled or afraid. Yeah. You see, God wants us to have his peace. So let's, let's look at how to gain peace. In order to find the peace of God in unsettling times, we need to put first things first. We have to gain peace with God. And we can't have that peace with God until we have peace with one another. Well, the fact of the matter is that outside of Christ, we can't have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of folk who reject Christ or refuse to accept his offer of eternal life. Yeah. But we are all created in God's image. Yeah. If we have hatred against our brother or sister, it's the same as having hatred against God. Yeah. All we need to take care of problems between ourselves and others is to do it when they're small. Before they turn into something that gets away from us. Jesus said that all can be a child of God. All it takes is faith in him. God doesn't want us to be his enemy. He wants us as his child. He sent Jesus to make it happen. Jesus would rather die than to see our lives without God. Because there's a penalty for that. And it's called eternal torment. May I suggest to you this morning some strategies for living in peace with God? Number one, we need to understand that God is in control. From the beginning to the end. We need to understand that God handles this work. That ultimately his plans will succeed. Jesus said he had overcome the world. He did that in his death in which he conquered sin and grave. He did that through his resurrection 
whether he conquered death and his power. He also did it giving his, us his word so that we can learn how to live for him. And at the same time, find comfort in God's plan. For God's plan will never be stopped by anybody. No matter what the problem is on this planet, God's will is always being done. No one can change God's plan. No matter how hard they try, God is sovereign. He is on the throne in heaven. He is in control of everything. And there's no getting away from that. Understanding this goes a long way in helping us to live in peace with God. And secondly, we need to pray about everything. Yeah. Two years ago in Kentucky, there was a little boy who was being very disruptive during service. After a few minutes, his father, who had put him under his arm, carried him out. No one in the congregation so much as even raised an eyebrow until the child cried out in a southern accent, Y'all pray for me now. <laughs> Philippians says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Amen. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace yes. with exceeding anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing and to never give up. God hears and moves on our behalf of his people. God doesn't always answer us the way we think he should. But he does never ignore our prayers. God is always listening from his cry. He hears each and every prayer we offer. He hears every groan that we cry out. Yeah. One of the best ways to reduce the problems in your life is to turn to God in prayer. Yeah. We need to ask God for his help with our problems yeah. instead of trying to do it all on our own. We need to give our problems over to God and let him take care of them. First Peter says, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a Roman lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. But remember in a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Amen. Prayer, brothers and sisters, is simply talking to God about what you think and what's going on in your life. It is your means of taking your problems and giving them to Him. Yeah. And nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Thirdly, yeah. brothers and sisters, we need to start living with a biblical mindset. Peace comes through a mind that focuses on good. We are all familiar with the saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. The only way to defeat evil thoughts, <coughs> thoughts that destroy our peace, is to begin to think of something else. To think happy, pleasant things. A mind that is filled with wrong thoughts is one that robs us of our peace. Having a biblical mindset, is one that believes that God's word is correct about all it teaches, including the world and its influences. And the point I'm trying to make is that who those who love Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength will have an easier time coping and responding to the peace 
the world off. Only Christ can bring lasting peace. Amen. Peace with God, yes. peace among men and nations, peace within our hearts. Until he comes, brothers and sisters, we can find no peace. Amen. Amen. Fourthly, we have to live in obedience. Sin hampers our relationship with God. But obedience brings peace. We can enjoy the blessings of God because he gives them to us, to those of us who obey. If we want peace, then we need to live in obedience. Yeah. God's word is filled with promises that give us help to get through the problems of our day-to-day -day world. And the best way to find these answers is to read the Bible on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. And if we do this, we'll be surprised at what we might find. Yeah. One of the greatest things we can ever discover is that God has some promises that seem directed <coughs> right at each and every one of us. And we can cling to these verses over and over throughout the years to come. Yeah. Lamentation says, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. Yeah. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I'm grateful, brothers and sisters, oh, yeah. for that promise. Because I've made some bad choices in my life. But God's faithfulness is always there. Yeah. We should thank Him for that. Okay. If you've been a Christian for any length of time, you have discovered some of those wonderful promises. If you've been a Christian any length of time, you know you have messed up along the way. Uh -huh. Not me, brother. I come to church every Sunday and I pay my tithe. Sometimes I serve on boards. You can't be talking about me yet. I'm specifically talking about you. Because I know you mess up. What you mean, brother? You don't know my life. They all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have no sin. We are liar. And the truth is not us. I personally thank God for what he has done for me in the past. And I realized that it was God himself that got me through my tough times. Yeah. It has also the power to bring me through my troubles of the day. And when we realize that, peace can fill us up. When I know God is able, I can rest in peace. When I know God will help me, I can weather every storm. When I understand God is on my side, I'm ready to face every battle because I know I have a power that is greater than me and that that power will overcome every circumstance, press my way. God's peace begins when we come to him in faith, not because the problem is wrong, but because we know God can handle it no matter what comes our way. And so, as we celebrate this season, the season of our Savior's birth, we need to remember the peace that Jesus gives is not the absence of trouble but rather the confidence that he is there with you always and that God will always, always. see you through. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your problems are, no matter how deep you pray, no matter how great the struggle, and God will see you through. And listen, brothers and sisters, though we sometimes walk away from him, he never
that blessed night when our Savior was born. The scripture tells us that the angels in heaven sent out a tie. Said, Glory to God in the high and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Since that day, folks have been struggling to realize the peace the angels proclaim. Since that day, Christians have been struggling in their personal lives and as a community to find peace that was promised us. I say, stop by to say, struggle no more. You don't have to struggle to find. The scripture says, pray, read his word, and walk in his way. And you get a peace. Peace. Not that you'll be any better than you are right now. You could be. We pray that we will be. But you can rest assured that God still brings peace to the weary soul. That God still brings peace to the broken heart. You know, this world right now is as crazy as it can be. I mean, there's confusion all over the globe. People are protesting in India against what's going on in their nation. They're protesting in Iran against what's going on in their nation. And they ought to be protesting in the United States of America against what's going on in our nation. But with all that going on, all the wars and the rumors of war, all the threats of violence, and all the ways that uh, terrorists try to make you feel insecure, God offers Peace. Amen. Amen. Peace, brothers and sisters. Peace in the face of violence. Peace in the face of hatred. Peace in the face of confusion. Peace in the face of the trials and difficulties of our faith. Listen, this world may not get any better. I know that's a hard one. This world may never do what's right. Well, but you can have a peace in the midst of it all. So that no matter what the world does, you never get pushed too far one way or the other. So that you can live, as I like to hear Chris say, I always ask him this so I can hear him say, so you can be living the dream. <laughs> Amen. But you must know God's peace to truly live the dream that God has for you. And so today, if you don't have peace in your heart, you don't have peace in your family, you don't have peace in your relationships, you don't have peace in your job, God offers you peace. How do I receive it? You receive it by faith. In who he who is the prince of peace. Of whom the angels say glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill to all. And if you don't have that peace, I offer Jesus today. If you're struggling, I offer a solution found in faith in a God who so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Believers on him should not perish but have everlasting life. God offers that peace. But he won't make you take it. You must accept it for yourself. And so, as believers pray, we all stay. Doors of the church 